let me extend warm welcome to all the scholars and scientists who have gathered here to participate in the discussions and deliberations of this very significant seminar on Agni Hotra. As we know, Vedas and allied literature, allied Vedic literature, makes a mention of Panj Mahayajjas, five great yajjas to be performed by every human being daily. And Agni Hotra is one of the five great yajjas, those Panj Mahabhutas, to be performed by human being. So this seminar, Today, this seminar is specifically dedicated to the spiritual and scientific dimensions of Agnihotra. And I'm happy to inform that very distinguished scientists uh, like uh, Professor Shilvamurthy and uh, scholars like Dr. Ulrich Berg, they have given their consent to participate, <coughs> or to present their experiences, research experiences research is done on Agni Hotra. So, I welcome all uh, the learned speakers and the scholars in the audience who have gathered here to make this seminar a grand success. So today, we have three distinguished speakers. First one is Dr. Ulrich Berg, he is from Germany. And second one is uh, Professor the William Silvamurthy, he was the distinguished scientist uh, government of India and he worked on many places on government positions and he was uh, uh, very close to uh, the former president of India Abdul Kalam Azad and he became the R&D chief after him. And the third speaker is Professor uh, Ganesh Thite. Umakant Thite, a Sanskrit professor from Pune. So these, all these three scholars, I welcome them. <coughs> now, first of all, I would like to invite Usha Devi Prasad from South Africa to introduce our learned speaker, Usha Devi Prasad. Prem Namaste to you all. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor William Salvamurti. Professor William Salvamurti is presently working with Amity University as president. Amity Science Te Technology and Innovation Foundation, Director General of Amity, Directorate of Science and Innovation, and Chancellor, Amity University, Chandi Chandishkar. Dr. Salvamurti did his master's in human physiology from Christian Medical School and Doctorate of Medical Science from Delhi University in 1982 and Doctorate of Science from Bangalore in 2006. He was also awarded Doctor of Science from five universities in recognition of his outstanding research and development contributions in life sciences. Dr. Salva Murthy has served defense research and development organizations, government of India for 40 years, in which all the health related and life science related technologies were developed and inducted into the armed forces for keeping the health and efficiencies of soldiers, even in extreme operational environments. This biomedical research immensely benefited the armed forces personnel and gave a lot of spin-offs benefits to the society at large. His contributions include the development of life support technologies for soldiers, NBC defense technology, nanotechnology, application for defense, application for yoga for the armed forces, military psychology and others. He was a leader of the first Indo-Soviet Indo science scientific expedition to the Arctic Circle 
for polar physiology research. Dr. Salva Murthy is presently a member of the Scientific Advisory Committee to Cabinet, particularly in the field of life science, including health research. He is a member of the High Powered Committee appointed by the Indian Council of in Medical Research to review its 12th plan proposal and chairman of Technology Commercialization Committee. He has published more than 250 research pa papers in journals of repute, including 18 books. He has been a member of the Indian delegation to the World Health Assembly under the chairmanship of Health Minister to speak about the complementary systems of medicine, including yoga. He has represented India at an organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons at the Conference of State Parties, Executive Council, Working Group, and Confidentiality Commissions. In recognition of his significant contribution to biomedical research and development, Dr. Salva Murthy has been awarded a number of prestigious research awards, including CSIR National Awards for Science and Technology Innovations, presented by Honorable Prime Minister of India in 2012 an award for contribution to high altitude medicine in 2012, technology leadership award in 2010, presented by defense minister, lifetime achievement award by the president of India in the field of clinical and preventative cardiology in 2006, and many more. I now present to you Professor William Selva Murthy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ushaji, for Thank this you. very kind and generous introduction. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So, pranam to each and every one of you who have joined us at this very important international seminar on scientific and spiritual perspectives of Agnihotra, an ancient Indian wisdom which has given humanity many valuable things to keep your life, the world, happy, healthy, prosperous. So we are going to bring out some of, we are going to mine some of the scientific findings, some of the spiritual aspects which we have been able to understand through these webinar, the five days webinar. So I must compliment Professor Dr. Ravi Prakash Aryaji for this initiative. And uh, I have seen his profile, I have seen his achievements, I have known him for his great achievements and he's occupying a very important position in Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati chair in the Maharishi Dayanand University in Rotak. So thank you so much for this initiative the world needs this initiative now with the COVID-19 situation. The whole world is disturbed, is in turmoil. And we need to bring the uh, uh, happiness, peace, and harmony back. So maybe Agrihotra could be one of the important uh, avenue by which we will be able to create a new world order in this COVID situation. So thank you, Professor Ravi Prakash Haryaji. And I'm also happy to see Professor Dr. Ulrich Burke from Germany, which I have heard him because I have been sharing the stage with him on a few occasions earlier. So I'm so happy that he's here. I'm sure he will sort out his uh, the technical hitch, glitch which he has and then come back. And we are very keen to listen to you, Professor Burke. Now, let me share my screen.
Dr. Ravi Prakash, can you see the screen? Dr. Ravi? Yes, we are able to see, sir. Yes, okay. we are able to see. It's Thank visible. you. We can see. Thank you so much. Perfectly visible. So we are going to talk about Agrihotra as a technology or a process for global transformation. So this is very important. We need this transformation of this world today. So how can we do that with Agnihotra? Is there a possibility? If so, to what extent? This is what I'm going to deliberate in the next about 45 minutes. Devan? Just leave the screen, Devan. OK. So our gratitudes to Professor Ravi Prakash Arya. And here, in this five days of event, which you are you are all going to contribute, come out with a blueprint that how do we bring this transformation of the world. So this is going to look at both spiritual aspects of Agnihotra and the scientific dimensions. So that is why, because we are all spiritual beings who have come to this world for human experience. Just imagine that way. Instead of thinking that we are all human beings seeking for the spiritual experience. They're actually spiritual beings who have come to this world for human experience. So then you would appreciate this better because we are all embodiment of energy, the Atma. So how this Agrihotra can influence that high energy of Atma? When you look at Agrihotra, it's being practiced across the globe, particularly in India, where it originated. It is mentioned in Vedas. So I would show that Atharva Veda mentions about Agnihotra. So India is the lighthouse for the global peace and harmony. In the whole history of India, we never invaded or showed an aggressive posture against any country. The Ahimsa, spirituality, has been there at the grassroots level, at the genetic level in all these people of India. So India is a lighthouse for Agnihotra as well. So we, we, have, we are propagating this concept of Agnihotra across the globe. So you will see more than 100 centers uh, and also people practicing Agnihotra at home. So this is in India, this is very, very popular. Every function, even in our Amity University, in all the Amity campuses, we have 17 universities in India and uh, uh, 11 universities in India, 17 campuses abroad, 28 schools. So in all this Amity institution, we start everything with Agnihotra. We start everything with uh, Yajna. We start everything with Havan. So that is the power. And Dr. Ashok Chohan, who has founded this Amity universe, has created the concept, everything should be started with the Havan. So I wanted to understand what is the power of this Havan? So if you look at the global level, it's a global phenomenon in almost 60 countries, more than 60 countries, Agrihotra centers exist, not that it's being practiced, centers exist. And be it Canada, I see many distinguished people from Canada, US, North America, and also South America, and on the Eastern side, even Australia, Japan, so uh, Kazakhstan, everywhere. Now Agrihotra has become a movement among many people but we want multifold logarithmic progression in the practice of Agnihotra. That is why this uh, seminar. It's a global phenomena practiced in 60 countries. I have named some of them. You saw that in the map, but now I have just named it here, including New Zealand. Only thing Greenland we have not uh, included yet. So even in China, there is a practice of uh, the Agrihotra in some places. So Africa, in all these countries, Agrihotra is practiced. See the child who is just here, who is now being in, inducted into Agrihotra by the mother. In India, Akal Court is the place where the cradle of knowledge of Agrihotra in the recent years has been preceded, propagated by uh, Param Sadguru Sri Gajanan Maharaj in Akal Court. I have been there at least three times. I have seen the vibration over there when the Agnihotra is practiced uh, in the morning during sunrise and also during evening at the sunset time. So Param Sadguru Sri uh, Gajanan Maharaj 
is the one who who initi who propagated this in a big way and yagna the sacred is a sacred science it's just not only a spiritual practice or a, or a ritual it's actually a science which i will be showing it to you how it is science and it's a process of refinement of subtle energy so we are nothing but the embodiment of energy the atma is nothing but energy so we will be influenced by energy across the universe advaita there is no duality between me and the universe so i am part of the universe universe i am in universe and universe is in me so the pro, it is the agrihotra yagya is process of refinement of subtle energy with the help of thermal which you see the fire over there and also the cosmic energy which draws like a funnel into the pyramidal structure radiates back to the environment so it's nothing but the cosmic energy of sound that is mantras where you recite gayatri mantra or suryaya swaha suryaya idam namama prajapate swaha prajapate idam namama which is recited during the sunrise so these mantras have got tremendous effect when you recite Om. The sound, sound energy, the mantra energy, is tremendous vibration. It influences not only the individual but the whole universe. So that is why this power of yagya, it is the integrated science. It has health. It can lead to. providing a good health success in your endeavors purity of the soul and also charity and harmony of the world can be created if everyone practices this this kind of havan agrihotra mantras meditation yoga imagine a world satyug will be there if you are if we do all this and it can also give abundance of wealth peace bliss wisdom prosperity unity everything can come from this science that is why it is the integrated science the yagya there are about 400 yagnas yagnas uh, have been defined in shastras 400 types and uh, some of them i have put here seva yagya then prana yagya jnana yagya so everything is giving no giving and the lord himself lord krishna mentions about yagya in bhagavad gita so that is the power of the yag yagna why yagna why do we need to practice yagna so we have been looking from scientific angle social angle and subtle level we have not understood everything but what little we have been able to understand about yagna this we are going to present here in these five days of seminar so it's a based on scientific laws of nature this yagna is nothing but it is agni it is cosmic energy it promotes well being and happiness sends positive vibrations because everything is vibration the whole life the whole universe exists in vibrations so yagna sends positive vibration to the universe it creates a aura of peace that's what we want the whole world is in turmoil this harmony so how do you bring peace global peace and harmony maybe perhaps the yagna could be one one of the device without any spiritual connotations we can practice this as a spiritual awakening igniting our souls and minds so what is the meaning of agnihotra agni means fire because there are many people who may not understand these words agni is fire hotra means healing the healing of the self the universe and the environment using the fire fire and cosmic energy so that is agni hotra and it is practiced in a rhythmic way circadian rhythm both in the morning during sunrise exactly at the time of sunrise and also exactly at the time of sunset which keeps varying on a day to day basis in different region so it has to be practiced exactly at the time of sunrise in that region in your location and also at the time of sunset so because it coincides with the circadian rhythm of the region and the people the pyramid is the fire you know pyramid means the fire technique fire means fire 
Per, per Amid. I'll show it to you in the next slide. So it's the pro process of removing toxins from atmosphere. So the atmosphere has got a lot of pollution, air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution. So all this, it is the Agnihotra, is the process of removing the toxins in atmosphere through fire. And also the organic gases it emits to the environment, which I'll be talking to you. I'll be giving the scientific perspectives. Now I'm just taking to, through the understanding of Agnihotra. There are many beneficial effects the whole, to the whole biosphere and the whole universe. Man, animals and plants and the universe, Prakriti. It, it actually, it got revived, as I said, by Sadhguru Sri Gajanan Maharaj. I was, uh, uh, I was inducted into this knowledge through Colonel Deshpande, who was in Army Medical Corps when I was the, when I was in Defense Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences. In DRDO, we not only make missiles, aircraft, radars, sonars, torpedoes, but we also look to how do we use the ancient Indian wisdom to make our soldiers more robust, as well as happy, healthy, working in extremes of environments like high altitude, cold, desert, underwater, aerospace. Because yoga was taught to a soldier in the battlefield. Uh, Arjuna was given this wisdom of Bhagavad Gita in the battlefield. So yoga was taught by Lord Krishna in the battlefield. So we thought how we can take this knowledge to our soldiers to help them to be fit, and also happy and serving the nation. So we did a lot of research in DRDO, looking at prophylactic, promotive, and curative aspects of yoga, and also Agrihotra, Yagna. All this is a part of our ancient wisdom. So we were looking at how do we use this. That is why Colonel Deshpande introduced me to Agrihotra and also Akalkot. So based on the faith, and also scientific evidences. How does uh, the Agnihotra works? It is it heals the environment through Agni, and the cosmic energy, sun, sun. You know, the, you are getting the cosmic energy from sun and cosmos. So that is another another energy level. Then mantra chanting. So these three influence the environment and mankind and cause the healing. Hotra, Agni, Hotra. Then it's normally practiced in the early morning during sunrise and sunset using a copper pyramidal vessel or it could be a gold pyramidal vessel. That is very important. You cannot put any, any iron or any other metal. You need to have copper pyramidal vessel. Why pyramidal? In Greek, pyr means fire. Amid means the center. No, the center of the fire will be there in pyramidal structure. And then cow dung, it is used, it's a, it's actually a cow dung is used to create that fire. It's a disinfectant. Everybody knows there are scientific evidences to show that cow dung is disinfectant. And it contains plenty of menthol, ammonia, phenol, indole, formalin. These are all disinfectant. It can purify the environment and it can disinfect the environment. So that is why the cow dung is used. Then you also use unbroken rice. The rice, full rice is used and it contains 14 to 18% of water content, moisture content, and the remaining is starch. And it contains volume and albuminous substances there. So the why full rice is offered to create the organic gases which will be emitted to the environment. The cow ghee, life so says Vedas, you know, life, cow ghee is life is life medicine of the uh, uh, medicines. Cow ghee is so powerful. That is why, you know, Dr. Ashok Chauhan, the founder president after Yagna, he used to take the ghee. Whenever there's a problem, he says, you just rub with that ghee after your Agrihotra or the uh, Haban. You just rub it. You get purified. The, pure, the problem disappears. So this cow ghee has got tremendous medicinal potential, which is well known. And also it's a cardiac stimulant and improves memory. So cow ghee has got many, many beneficial effects. So this is used in, you put the rice and then with the cow ghee, you offer it to the fire. 
then it is why it is practiced exactly at sunrise and sunset. The whole system works on a circadian rhythm of that region. If I look, uh, look at my body, my pulse rate may be the lowest early morning at 4 o'clock or 4.30, 5 o'clock. If you measure at basal heart rate, it will be the lowest. So that is the time that when the everything is, the soul is charged and suddenly you do this early morning at sunrise and the whole cosmic energy from sun comes into the pyramid, radiates back into the environment in the form of electromagnetic fields. So this is the mantra. Now coming back to mantra, which is being recited, Surya Swaha, Surya Yidam Namama, Prajapataye Swaha, Prajapataye Yidam Namama. This is recited during sunrise. This is the mantra for the sun god. And then in the evening, during sunset, the Agneya Swaha, Agneya Yidam Namama, Prajapataye Swaha, Prajapataye Yidam Namama. This is what is recited in the during the sunset. So these mantras are important. Agnihutra mantras are universal. We do Agnihutra twice. Once in the evening and once in the morning. The time is very important. The Sandhyaka or the transition time when the beginning of the sunset and the end of the sunset. That is the time band within which Agni Uttara has to be done. On the utterance of Swaha, I offer one offering into the fire. Two offerings of rice. Apply a little bit of ghee to it. I, I have soaked one piece in ghee and arranged the rest of the gome around it and try to have a blooming, beautiful fire in this Agni Uttara Patra. Mantra is Surya Yaswaha Surya Yidam Namama Prajapataye Swaha Prajapataye Yidam Namama so, now here is how I will do Agni Hotra, evening Agni Hotra. It's time. Agnaye Swaha, Agnaye Iram Namama, Rajapataye Swaha, Rajapataye Iram Namama. This is how it is practiced. So, some of the precautions you should uh, look at is it has to be done at the exact time of sunrise and sunset. So, you should make it, uh, you should know the exact time and also only whole kernel rice to be used, not broken rice. And also the copper or gold pyramidal vessel has to be used for the ritual. Cow dung should be dried. There should not be wet. It should be dried so that the water content is, should be very low. Then it should also have a correct mix content in proper ratio, it should be there. So when you do this, then immediately after performing Agrihotra or during Agrihotra, there's tremendous explosion of energy, which I did experiment in the defense research. What I did, an interesting experiment, I am going to show you some results that I kept the uh, the soldiers who doesn't understand the meaning of all this, so there is no bias, religious or anything, and they're all from Gorkha soldiers. And then we put the electrodes for measuring electroencephalogram, electrocardiogram, respiratory rate, galvanic skin resistance, a number of physiological parameters. And then they are not actually reciting the mantra or practicing. They are just sitting in the environment and somebody is practicing this that itself is sufficient enough. So when you are recording these electrophysiological signals, like for example, EEG is of the order of 10 to 200 microvolts. When you look at, look at electrocardiogram to measure the heart function, you are recording a signal at one millivolt, millivolt. So 
this is what is the lowest level so when you get this high energy i found the dc shift happening in the uh, when you are recording this you know the the electric the, the needles of the recording devices just swing like this then it stabilizes so that means at that time there is tremendous energy coming and the body harnesses that as an antenna you know when you when i sit near tube light and i record ecg i have to put a 50 hertz filter why because i am like my body is like an antenna taking that ac interference coming from a tube light so same way this energy high level of energy coming to the place of agnihotra and coming into the funnel like energy focusing radiating back to the environment the people sitting there they are harnessing like an antenna this energy that is why the dc shift in eeg ecg and other electrophysiological recording occurs and then it stabilizes after some time now i'll show you some of these interesting recording and i will before that i will show some results of other people who have done some experiments and there was one beautiful hypothesis even in the uh, gamma radiation ionizing radiation like what happened in chernobyl and the people who were very close to the uh, the one place in which there was no contamination even though it comes in the radius of uh, the affected area of chernobyl and so there, there was a paper it was very interesting for me to read uh, mrs anjali god godgill it is her work this work where she showed made a hypothesis that everything is the discordant sound the waves the vibration and once you do agnihotra how the absolute cosmic fire element and the discordant waves are destroyed by this so it neutralizes even the effects of the ionizing radiation and she gave a hypothesis and in the bhopal gas, gas tragedy and uh, we know that it happened uh, in 1984 and many people died uh, because of the methyl isocyanate and then the people who practiced agnihotra even though they were very close to the installation of the source of this tragedy they were not affected this family where they practiced agnihotra regularly shri sohanlal and shri kushwaha and also rathor and the family came out unscathed this is documented it reported scientifically you can even now check no one died nobody was hospitalized this is the power of agnihotra and uh, then in the chernobyl this is the reason uh, they we, they measured the radiation affects the milk because it affects the cow and everything gets polluted contaminated the fodder gets affected so they tested one area in which there was no uh, the it, uh, there was no contamination so they were wondering what happened so actually somebody was practicing agnihotra over there and which is also documented by austria scientists and then now what we did in the uh, our laboratory i'm going to show you and uh, neurophysiological parameters we measured ecg eeg and uh, gsr galvanic skin resistance and we measured the alpha theta delta beta bands in the electroencephalogram before agnihotra during agnihotra and immediately after agnihotra what happens to the body and mind so when i said the dc shift occurred at the time exactly at the time of sunrise and sunset when the mantra is recited so we wanted to rule out is it the sound effect so we said instead of instead of uh, uh, surya ya swaha surya instead of the mantra we did defense institute of physiology and allied sciences we produced some sound syllables of those type just to see whether it is the sound effect no sound effect it was there was no effect then we altered the time instead of sun rise exact time delayed by 15 minutes half an hour uh, later so it doesn't the, uh, bring the effect then we did instead of cow dung cow ghee we just put the wood and then made the fire and then we also instead of cow ghee we put another oil coconut oil so you need to do the whole ritual if you have to get this effect and reproducible results like what i show it in this slide you need to have all the rituals in place exactly as per the sutras as per the norms which is to be done so what you see in the figure is the compressed spectral array of the electroencephalogram 
which is before, before, during, and immediately after. So what you would find here, see, you have four bands, delta, theta, alpha, beta. Zero to four hertz is delta, four to eight is theta, uh, uh, and then eight to 13 is alpha, and about 13 hertz is the beta. And you have gamma and others. So in this, you will see there is, after the practice of yoga, there is a tremendous increase in the amplitude and power of the delta, uh, the uh, alpha band, 8 to 13 hertz, which is which indicates the mental tranquility. Similarly, theta band, power increases in theta band as well. So we showed that how the person sitting there in that environment can be influenced by this cosmic energy, which is, which is harnessed by the body like an antenna. And then it brings out this mental tranquility, which is also manifested in the physiological uh, parameters like heart rate slows down, respiration becomes deeper, rhythmic. So we did a number of studies to repeat to see whether it's reproducible. So it, it clearly demonstrated there's a suppression of delta activity, increase in alpha and theta activities. Then we also looked at cardiovascular parameters, but there was, you see the heart rate slowing down after Agnihotra. It is coming down, but not very significant. Three beats per minute is quite significant because for a heart, instead of uh, 62 beats, if it functions with 59 beats per minute, three beats per minute, you can see the conservation, which the wear and tear in the heart, which, which will be reduced to that level. So it also slows down. So, so like this, we found physiological parameters also reflected an activation of parasympathetic system, which is the cooling system of the body. Then we looked at the mean skin temperature, galvanic skin resistance. We found that that was increasing. So you see after this, it was, uh, uh, it was showing a decrease and then started rising. And during Agrihotra, you would find significantly a higher side, whereas in the other, uh, the control, you would see that there's a decline. So galvanic skin resistance could also be influenced by temperature and also the sweating, which might happen. But then we didn't find much of a sweating because it's not that power of that, uh, the heat is not so much to produce the sweating to that level. Then we also looked at uh, some of the drug administration. This was, this was not done by us, but all that what I presented was done in our laboratory. Now I'm going to show some of the studies done by other scientists across the globe. And here, the the you see this curve this is after agnihotra with with medication so the pharmacokinetics of the drugs are also influenced by agnihotra otherwise the drug clearances would have been reached the peak here and then come down from injections and if you give the oral goes up comes down but whereas if you combine this with agnihotra the effect is sustained for a longer time so this is what was also reported by uh, by a scientist who has worked in this area then there is also study by gulecha gulecha is a psychiatrist colonel gulecha who was in the army medical corps in the rr hospital in delhi and he he found for de addiction he and colonel deshpande both of them used agrihotra for drug de addiction as well as alcohol smoking they found that once the person starts, everything slowly, it, it just uh, it stops. The body repels. So the soul gets so much charge that it doesn't require, the body doesn't require this type of addiction. It has a bacteriostatic effect. Bacterial growth was inhibited by 96%. So this was shown by Sohoni and also Mondekar. So these papers are available. These are well-studied, controlled scientific studies, which indicated that yes, uh, this has tremendous power. Then coming back to the ashes, after you do the Agnihotra, there is ashes. Ashes here has got medicinal as well as tremendous fertilizer potential, because it almost has everything what the plants require. So the soil preparation, you can use it. Seed treatment, you can enclose it, encapsulate the seeds to increase the viability of the seed and germination. And also during the irrigation, you can use it so that it penetrates into the ground. And it's, a, it's an organic farming. So the crop protection, it helps 
from plant disease management you can use it and also the storage of crops also you can use this so there is a tremendous application in agriculture sector as well in horticulture then and this is also another study done by a scientist and here you will see uh, the shooting as well as rooting arborization rhizosome formation everything is increased water holding capacity the microbial consortium available in that environment everything is positive so this is what was reported uh, by another scientist who has done the study on on the agriculture sector in terms of control the growth of the plants similarly a lot of studies of organic and ag agrihotra you see here the shelf life of flowers it goes up and so many applications in agriculture besides the health and there are reports are available in, agri uh, in agriculture sector as well. If you look at the 92 natural chemical elements which the body needs, everything is there in agrihotra ash. So almost most of the natural chemical elements which you see in the periodic table is available in the ashes which has been also analyzed and reported. Then we did the study on this uh, Krillian photography at uh, our Institute of Nuclear Medicine and Allied Sciences. That Salhan did this work where before Agrihotra, you see the level of radiation from your extremities, hand, fingers. And then after Agrihotra, see the energy level, the Krillian photography indicates the energy level augments tremendously. So this, this helps you to heal. That means your aura, your kundalini, your chakras, they get charged so that each body heals. The energy flow becomes normal in the disease patients. So you can use it to increase your power, the spiritual power, mental power, and physical power using Agnihotra. And health and well-being, there's a lot of control studies available which shows anxiety reduces, stress level goes down, depression score reduces, and also the feeling of guilt and negative emotions also decrease. And it also increases the willpower, mental peace, equilibrium, equilibrium, samatvam yoga uchyate. The equilibrium is achieved by this. It balances the homeostasis. So all this happens, which is just not only assumptions, but it has been shown by scientific evidences. So it heals the atmosphere. It heals you, that is human being, animals and plants. The whole biosphere can be healed and cured by this particular uh, practice of Agnihotra. And also it removes the foul odors. You know, there, there's also a study indicates, particularly thymol, eugene, pine, terpenol. So all these, uh, you know, the, uh, purifies the environment. It removes bacteria like a formaldehyde, formic acid, which, which is contained in this formalin. And then the environmental benefits you see this sulfur dioxide, which is one of the major pollutant, air pollution, oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen. You see from 3.36 before yagna and after yagna, 0.8 significant reduction in the ox sulfur dioxide. Similarly, nitrous oxide who goes down and bacteria count is tremendously decreased, 4,500 units. It becomes in the water which you keep in that environment and put the ashes and you see it goes down to one to five zero so tremendous reduction almost one fourth so this is just a pictorial representation of that then we also looked at in the water when you look at the ph it becomes relatively alkaline after you do the agrihotra and put the ashes into it 6.1 was the control sample once you add this agrihotra ashes it becomes 7.1 the color changes it is whitish in color the the, the waste water but as soon as you put this ashes up and keep it for some time it becomes colorless so these are the type then bod cod we have measured all of them biological oxygen demand uh, chemical oxygen demand all those shows that you can purify using this ashes even the waste water now coming to the pandemic how we said so there are some reports scientific reports available how the during pandemic agrihotra has helped people to uh, heal themselves it's a potent weapon against virus bacteria fungus all this pathogens reduces the probability of getting affected this is what was reported 
I have not done this, but I have picked up from scientific reports, which I will be showing now. Then it also helps, you know, in this unprecedented challenge which we are facing in COVID-19 situation, the fear of contracting and also working from home, temporary unemployment, all these are challenges, unprecedented challenges, which led to depression, anxiety disorders. The people who practiced Agrihotra, we found that there is tremendous improvement. I'll show you the reports. And the mechanism is this particular stress, the perceived stress, it acts through psychoneuroimmunological axis. Psycho perceived stress, the mind perceives it and then sends it through limbic system, cortical limbic system. Mm -hmm. It sends it to sympathetic and the hormonal system, endocrine system, which manifests adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol. Everything is poured in due to stress. Then the elastic load increases, which suppresses your immunity. So this perceived stress suppresses your immunity. But when you practice Agnihotra, as I showed earlier, mental tranquility comes in. EEG, the alpha waves increases, theta wave increases. So that is an indicator of the mental tranquility. Now, these are the studies, scientific studies reported in the literature. Like these are all very top good journals, like International Journal of Research in Pharmaceutical Sciences. And that reported Agnihotra Homa, an Ayurveda therapy in the prevention and control of COVID-19. You should read this article. I will leave this presentation so that people can also uh, share this with uh, uh, and then study them whenever you have time. Then this is another paper by Burke. Uh, who he is going to mention about this. I, Dr. Burke, I have the liberty to present to mention about your research, Global COVID-19 and Agrihotra. It was published in a very one of the top journals, International Journal of Global Science Research. And he reported that it can also help in COVID-19, the Agrihotra. Like this, there are reports that Agrihotra has really helped people to uh, as a prophylactic, promotive, and curative uh, in, in this COVID situation. So, but then we need a large number of studies. We need to validate them. How does it kill? How does it kill the uh, virus itself? What is the mechanism of action? So such studies, whether the Agrihotra ashes, you can do in vitro cell line studies and in which you can keep this ashes and then put the virus there, does it kill? So you can do in vitro, then in vivo studies in animals. A lot of things can be done, which need to be done. Now, finally, the message, final message is Agnihotra creates harmonious, peaceful and healthy atmosphere. Healthy, not only for the individual, but for the whole biosphere and the whole globe and universe. Agnihotra neutralizes toxicity. I have shown some uh, scientific proof for this. Greater number of people engaged in the practice of Agnihotra, uh, faster shall be the impact. So we need to increase this number. 60 countries, it should be almost 187 countries and everyone should practice this and home of farming will lead to sustainable climate resilient crops and agriculture so that is also another benefit we can use these ashes in a big way and with this uh, you cannot change the past you cannot replay the past of 1984 what happened in the uh, industrial pollution that caused and also industrial accidents which caused damages but certainly you can create a beautiful world. The future is in our hands, in your hands. So do the Agnihotra and that will create a happy, healthy world. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Shelva Murthy. It was a very illuminating lecture and it uh, covered almost all aspects, how the Agnihotra, a particular technique of Agnihotra that was adopted uh, by uh, certain school, how it is going to have effect on various, uh, uh, on agriculture, on mental health, and on so many physiological features. 